I think there's something to be said about the way people approach their studios. Everyone has their own way and nothing is wrong. Like everything is specific to you, right? Everyone's favorite rules. <laughs> I try to make my rules not boring. I mean, rules that are specific to how I work. Um, this is something I have printed out that I keep within one of my sketchbooks. And I always keep it to remind myself of like, stay on track. So the rules I have personally for the way I work is I know it has to be representational of body in some way. Like, what does that mean? You got to love the verbiage. Um, skinnish, fattish, lumpyish, tumorish, oozy, jiggly, so on and so forth. For me specifically, I have to think about my skin tone, layering of colors and getting broader ranges of skin tones and like always experimenting with that, trying to find different ways of working. Um, whenever I take molds, as of right now, um, I'm just taking molds off of my body currently and then morphing them. I think because I'm trying to, I do that because I'm trying to speak from my point of view and it's my attempt of trying to find a connection with other people because I know that even though I'm using my body, there's going to be like some similar thought processes happening to other people who I talk with. And I'm definitely open to like having volunteers in the future, like if taking molds off of other people. But for right now, I think that's where I'm sort of centered at. Um, also forgetting the perfect object. Um, again, reminders for myself. Remember, Kayla, you don't care about the perfect object. So stop trying to force myself to care. Thinking about the oops moments. And for me specifically, oops moments equals art. Mostly, sometimes it is just trash. I have to let it go eventually. Failed castings, I keep them for at least two months. I've discovered five is too long. Um, that becomes annoying. So a failed casting can either become an artwork or I just chop it up and recycle it because glass is expensive. So I remelt it as much as I can. I tell myself not to overthink. I find that whenever I overthink something for me, that leads, I end up kind of like lying to myself and that's when I make really bad artwork. Um, I feel like if I overanalyze something, then I get too muddled and then the work becomes too muddled. I never like to think about what I'm trying to say with my work. I like to frame it from what questions am I asking with my work, within my work. Um, I can't take credit for that. Um, I had a mentor who posed that to me and it's like my mind was blown just from that. So that's something I hold close now. Within my work and my practice, I have to always consider, think about how I take up space, how people take up space, both phys physically and metaphorically. Um, also thinking about what does it mean to exist as too much or too little simultaneously? Something I must almost address is what I'm the most uncomfortable with concerning myself. And that, of course, is multifaceted. So whenever I'm uncomfortable making my work, then that's usually a good sign for me. I will say that within my practice, like I don't get happy whenever I make a work. I find that in my studio or just making something that that's my sense of relief. That's my one way for me to just start to really think about things that I don't understand. Um, I'm not the best at vocalizing things. Um, I'm better at it at writing, but making my work is probably my best attempt at communication, I should say. Um, I also think about specificity. So the way I think is like, if something's more specific, maybe it's more relatable. I also have a rule for studio visitors, studio visitors that being constructive is great, but please be honest about my work. Sugarcoating doesn't help me. And I literally cannot understand it. Please just say the thing. I never tell people just like that. I have to remind myself not to be so blunt because my language can be off-putting and I know I can appear gruff sometimes. So I myself have to remind myself to, you know, chill out for a second. <laughs> I also think about the digital side of what a studio can be. I think that's like a whole nother job within itself and trying to stay organized is really important. So I always keep a list of things that I've applied to. Um, I'm being a little bit vulnerable right now, but I figure it's probably best. So everything I applied to, I keep it in a list and I keep it color coded. So whatever I applied to, like if I don't get something, I just put it in red. If I get something, then um, I'll highlight it in pink. And then if I'm just waiting to hear back, then I just keep it normal black text. So it's just a way of me to like acknowledge like what I've applied to. I didn't get it this time. Maybe I can apply next year, that sort of thing. And that's something that really helps me out. 
I also think about the way I have to keep my de- desktop organized. Like whenever I apply to stuff or even just having like an artist. I have to have some places want a 200 word one, some places want a full page one. So having everything organized in a way to where I can access it makes my life a bit easier. Everything that I apply to an opportunity, I also keep all of those documents. This is a list of all the things I've applied to. All the documents that were needed for each of those are in there. So something that's really cool is whenever I get an opportunity, I can find a similar thing that I applied to. I keep a Word document and I keep the PDF. I just copy the Word document. I copy, paste, and I edit where I have to and personalize it. Just like this. Um, I had applied to this place. Same thing. Now I just pull from that. And again, having like the Word document, having the PDF that I actually submit, and it's something that saves me hours of time. Thanks for checking out this Geek Shorts episode. This is just one of 10 chapters featuring the speaker's artwork, artistic practice, and direct conversations with the community. The full-length video, only publicly available for a limited time, can be found in the Geeks Talk subscriber archive, where you can also discover hours of content on even more contemporary glass artists and researchers. As a BIPOC and artist-led organization, Geeks redefines the culture of contemporary glass by canonizing artists and thinkers who have been historically marginalized in the field. If you'd like to support this effort, subscribe to Geeks and gain access to exclusive content. For more info, visit geeks.glass support. Thanks to this episode's sponsors, listed on screen and in the video description below.